In this video, we'll cover how to use a local PKI to create a CA certificate for use with the HTTPS proxy outbound content inspection. The first thing we'll cover are the requirements for the proxy authority certificate. And then next, we will cover the advantages for using a local CA certificate for this purpose. And then lastly, I'll go through a whole demonstration of using Active Directory to create one of these certificates to import onto the Firebox. As we covered in another video, the default Proxy Authority CA certificate on the Firebox is not trusted by any client devices. There are two ways that we can resolve this though. We can use a local CA like Active Directory to create an intermediate or subordinate CA certificate that we import onto the Firebox. Or, of course, you can distribute this default proxy authority certificate, but there's quite a few downsides with that method, and it tends to be a bit more work. When it comes to the local CA, you can use Active Directory, which is typically the easiest option since you do not need to make any changes on your domain machines. But if you do not have Active Directory, you can use OpenSSL or other free tools like Simple Authority to create the necessary CA certificate to import into the Firebox. So when it comes to using one of these local CA options, the biggest reason to use it is to avoid a lot of client work. If you use Active Directory, you actually don't need to do any client work for those domain computers. If you use one of the free tools that's out there, then you would need to do a one-time deployment, but it's still much easier than having to redeploy that certificate in the event that you have one of these cases listed right here. So for example, if the hardware dies, you upgrade the box, you have to do a downgrade, which would generally result in a factory default, or you simply need to change anything within that certificate, like if it's about to expire or anything along those lines, then in those situations, if you were using the Firebox's default certificate, you would then have to redeploy that certificate to all of the clients because there's no recovering that certificate in the event that any of these things occur. Therefore, it's much easier and even more reliable in a sense to use a local CA because if the Firebox does have an issue or you simply do a model upgrade, you would only have to import a certificate onto the new Firebox versus having to deploy a certificate to all of the machines on the network. I'm in the Firebox System Manager right now and I open the Certificates menu by going to View Certificates or by clicking this icon right here. In the list, you'll see a variety of certificates, but the one we're focused on for outbound inspection is the Proxy Authority Certificate. As you can see, I have the default one right here. It has FireWire HTTPS Proxy, the serial number, and it denotes that it's a CA certificate. This is that certificate that is not trusted by our client devices on the network. This is what we are going to be replacing using Active Directory. There is a decision that you can make right at the beginning though. You can either use the Firebox to generate a private key and a CSR using the wizard right here, or you can use a tool like OpenSSL to create your own private key and CSR. It doesn't matter which option you choose, but in the event that something happens to the Firebox or you are doing a model upgrade, if you go the route of creating your own private key, you can simply import that private key and the certificate that we're about to create onto the new box. You will not have to run through a CSR wizard again. There's nothing else to get signed. It's just a simple import. If you do choose to go the CSR wizard route on the Firebox, it means that on that replacement device, you would simply rerun the wizard and get the CSR signed again by the local CA. So it's not too much more work, but that's a decision you can make right off the bat. In my example, I will be using the Firebox CSR wizard to go through this process and get the CSR signed by Active Directory. The CSR wizard is pretty straightforward. In this case, I will be using the proxy authority option for outbound inspection. I'll need to fill out the required fields. 
and click Next. And on this menu, you can see it's already filled out the subject name, so I'll need to give it a domain name. And this may or may not match the CN, but it typically will for a simple certificate like this that you're using internally. Notice that I did not fill out the IP address. That's not a required field, and it's not necessary for this type of certificate. So I'll go ahead and move on. I will leave the RSA 2048-bit option for now. And then I'll put in the admin passphrase since it has to write this to the Firebox. And now I have the CSR ready to go. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And then I'm going to need to input this into my CA software in order to sign it. On my demo server here, I have the Active Directory Certificate Services installed, and I've already pre-configured all of this. And I'm going to be using this to create a subordinate certificate authority certificate for the Firebox. On basically every version of Windows Server, if you install the certificate services, it will spin up an IIS web server that has this page on it, and it looks identical regardless of what version you're using. I've logged into this. The URL path on the server is slash cert SRV to access this page. And what I want to do here is request a certificate. And in here, I'm not going to generate a user certificate. I need something else, so I have to click the advanced option. And here you can see it's telling you to paste a base64 CSR into this box. And that is exactly what I got from the Firebox. So I pasted that in there. This is the request that I received in that wizard I ran in FSM. And then for the template, I will need a subordinate certificate authority. This is the only option that will work for the outbound content inspection. It has to be a CA certificate. So I'll go ahead and generate that and it's instantaneous. And as mentioned in the other certificates videos, the Firebox works with base64 encoded files. So you must choose that and then download the certificate. Windows always gives the same name to the certificates you download, so I want to rename this just for my own sanity. I want to keep track of this because when you're working with multiple certificates, you want the names to be meaningful. So I will say that this is the Proxy Authority CA Certificate. Now that I have that certificate, if I go back to the FSM certificate window, I'm still in the CSR wizard. I'll go ahead and click Next. I would not recommend clicking this Import Now. That'll launch the classic manual import window, but we want to use the new import wizard. So I'll go ahead and click Finish you will see I have a pending proxy authority certificate here. This is the CSR that I just created. So if you forgot to copy that or you misplaced it, you're able to go in here and export the CSR again if you need that to get it signed by your CA. Since I already have my signed certificate, I'm going to go directly to the import certificate wizard. And then of course I'm going to choose the proxy authority since that's what I created. I will use the Base64 option, and then I will go browse to that file. And of course, I will have to change the file type, and there is the certificate that I've created. I'll click OK. This is the contents of that certificate, and I'll click Next. And at this point, it's asking me to import the root or any intermediate CAs that are above the certificate that I just created. In this case, it's looking for the Active Directory root certificate, and it tells me the common name right here. So this is the certificate I'm looking for, and if there's other intermediates, it will ask me for those as well. But I need to go obtain this. I can find it back on this web page. If I go back to the home, right here, there's the option to download a CA certificate. This is the CA I'm looking for. I must choose Base64 and then I can download that CA certificate. There it is, but again, I want to rename this just to make it a little bit easier to deal with. So I'll call this the AD root CA, so I know what I'm working with. Now that I have that, I can go back into this import wizard and browse to that file. Of course, change the file type, and there it is. Now that that's imported, 
need to put in the admin passphrase. Looks like that was the only certificate I needed for this chain. If you did have other certificates, other intermediates there, it would keep prompting you to import certificates until the entire chain is complete. Also, at the beginning, if you had made the decision to create the private key on your own using something like OpenSSL, it would also ask you to import that private key. I will click Finish. You'll see it did refresh here. And now my proxy authority certificate was replaced with the new one that I just created and had signed. Because we can only have one proxy authority certificate loaded at a time, it just replaces that default one. You'll also notice right here that I have the Active Directory CA certificate in the list because this was imported with that import wizard that we just used. So now that that is done, the Firebox has the new proxy authority certificate, which means that all of the client machines on my domain will implicitly trust this certificate because it was signed by this Active Directory root CA because the machines that have joined the domain all have a copy of this in their local trusted CA store. This also enables us to use things like 802.1x or to create some local web server certificates for use on the Firebox for other purposes because this CA certificate is already trusted by all of your computers. It's a very versatile option now that we've talked about how to import the certificate into the Firebox, I'd like to take a moment to talk about a few ways to get that certificate onto client devices. Typically, these are the methods you would use on clients that are not part of your domain, but it could be used for any type of device. The first option is to use the certificate portal that's running on the Firebox. Just connect on HTTP to the IP address of the Firebox on port 4126 with the URL path of slash cert portal. The next option is to use WSM, use the FSM or Firebox System Manager tool, open up that certificates window we just looked at, highlight the proxy authority and export it. The same option can be done in the web UI on the system certificates page. What's great about the certificate portal is that it's very easy for users to help themselves it is just a page with a download button and some basic instructions. And this type of page would come in handy if you are planning on decrypting guest user traffic. But really, it could be any other non-domain devices on the network. To recap, you can use a local PKI to create a subordinate CA certificate, which would make the outbound HTTPS inspection process easier to deal with because it makes it easier to deploy a certificate and it allows you to recover on a new Firebox should you encounter a hardware failure or you're doing a model upgrade without having to redeploy a certificate to all of your clients. In this situation, Active Directory is the easiest because you do not have to deploy anything onto your domain clients. They already trust that Active Directory root CA certificate that issued the subordinate CA for the Firebox. If you do have guest devices, you would still need to do an import of the AD root CA onto those devices, but the majority of your clients, you won't have to do any actions on. And lastly, that local CA can be used for other purposes as well. So if you deploy your local CA root certificate to these devices, you'll be able to issue web server certificates and other things which they would automatically trust inside the network. For more information on using certificates with the Firebox, please use the WatchGuard technical search.